do something funny. Come on, funny. Guess who? Anctuary. Anctuary. Charles Lawton, the hunchback of Notre Dame. And Sophie. Perfect, Dan. Cut. What? Do you have a question? Your hand has been up as long as I've been here. You're turning blue, Sam. Why is that? What? The... Oh, good God, I'm standing on his air hole. And I don't want to be intimate with anything that has a 90-day warranty. Dying is easy. Comedy is hard. What does that mean? I was hoping you would know. <laughs> <laughs> Not to worry, it will all become crystal clear as we review Tom Hanks and Sally Field's exciting new comedy, Punchline. And Billy Crystal's new comic melodrama called Memories of Me. So, sit back and relax, because you are at the movies. Tribune Entertainment presents Rex Reed and Dixie Wadley. At the movies. You got gall, not guts. You stand up, you tell dirty jokes. What does it have to do with you? Are you a sex pot? Give me a break. You're a Jersey housewife with snot-nosed kids, a car that won't start. You tell me about that. That's what takes guts. That's what you don't have. Am I making myself clear? I've gotten laughs. Fine, then take them and go home. I want to learn. Lady, it takes every night. Six clubs a night, all night. It takes working stag parties and Elks Club banquets where you open for... Learn. A Time for fire. all that. Well, how about right now? I'm going out to Queens. You want to come learn something? You can learn. Are you serious? Yes, I'm sure. you? Uh, uh... I guess I, not. Uh, I'm cooking for a dinner party. Ladies and gentlemen, I rest my case. You know, in a world of ugliness and despair, the greatest gift one person can give another is laughter. Comedy is the hardest work in show business, and getting started, well, that's the hardest part of all. Punchline is a fresh, inventive, and surprisingly touching look at the world of stand-up comics and the sacrifices they make to reach success. Sally Field is a frumpy New Jersey housewife with three demanding kids, a furious husband, and a house that's falling apart. But she's driven to find her own identity through the bad jokes she spends her cookie jar money to buy. Tom Hanks, on the other hand, in the most colorful, complex, and fully realized performance of his career, flunks out of medical school not to find his identity, but to share it in routines that expose his inner pain and insecurity. He's great because he's obsessed. She's terrible because she doesn't know what comedy is yet. Her Polish jokes flop. He can get a laugh out of an anatomy chart. And this is the scene where he drags her to a hospital in Queens for her first real lesson in using life as comedy material. Another game is double up on the medication. This is, you take the pill and you put it under your tongue and when they come around to check up on you, you insist it wasn't in the cup. And, it wasn't in the cup. <laughs> There's no pill there. You give me my medication. I'm sick. You see? Of course, those of you who are taking suppositories about want to pass on that whole thing. What? Do you have a question? Your hand has been up as long as I've been here. I'm sorry. This is probably like a very debilitating illness. What, what, what is your occupation, sir? I'm a doorman. <laughs> You're a doorman, so like, like you, hail, you hail taxi. That's what I do, yes. Okay, this is like a good uh, training device, then. Be, okay, you fine. You should get out of this hospital. <laughs> oh, look, a doctor here, folks. Son of a gun. A Jewish doctor. <laughs> Something you don't see very often in New York City Hospital. You are, you are a doctor, sir? Yes, I'm a doctor. And uh, what is your field of speciality? Uh, this is my first year. I, I don't know yet. Could I recommend a career in welding, perhaps? <laughs> <laughs> Drawn together at the same club where they work nights, he does help. And she grows, milking humor from her own life, and the audience responds. Murray, trust me on this. When your life is funny, Murray, what do you do for a living? Salesman. You're an insurance salesman? Uh, did you ever did you ever want to be anything else? Come on, think back. Think back with me. You're four, you're three, you're two, you're a small child. You're dressing up. It's Halloween. You know, all the other boys, they're firemen, they're, they're policemen, they're Zorro, they're Batman. And cute little Murray, whose mother adores him, is a... Insurance salesman. An insurance salesman. Murray, this can't be to what? You dressed up in a polyester suit and you handed out cards with your name on it? 
punchline is not just about one-liners. It's also about the fact that gifted people who make us laugh are sometimes crying on the inside. It shows the seedy club world where unfunny people sweat to succeed. It reveals small truths and big revelations about how lonely and desperate comedians are inside. Writer-director David Seltzer invades this world, and while the people aren't always likable, they never sink to cliches. She doesn't leave home for him, and he doesn't become the new David Letterman either, but as they compete for that final contest that could lead to a spot on Johnny Carson, the results lead them to self-discoveries that will surprise you. Tom Hanks goes from being wild and crazy to touching and tortured, showing every vulnerable side of the person he's playing without phony sentiment. He's miserable, angry, lonely, scared, ruthless, and hilarious, but best of all, he makes us see in Punchline that comedy is sometimes no laughing matter. I was so impressed, as you were, by the whole film, but especially by Tom Hanks and Sally Field showing sides of themselves that I had no idea were there. I've always enjoyed both of their work, but I would go to a stand-up back any day that either Tom or Sally did, and Sally, I frankly thought, was funnier than Tom was to well, the very, in the very last stand-up Have you known very many comics in your life? Because most of them sure. are insecure inside. And, very much and so. a lot of them are tortured. Uh, I think there's one scene in this movie where he's been rejected by her, and he plays the fool to hide his pain by imitating Gene Kelly and singing in the rain that is oh, inspired. Oh, it broke my heart. It broke my heart. I did, there were a few, th a few things I didn't like. I thought she got awfully funny awfully fast. And the end sort of seemed to fade off into the nether regions a bit. It didn't have quite the, the punch, if you will, as the, that the rest of the movie did. But that was so overshadowed by the fact that they were both so excellent. I think anybody should see this It still movie gives you a lot to think about. Oh, so much. I'll never look at a, a stand-up <laughs> comic the same way, I'll tell you. Well, next, Billy Crystal, now in King, a couple of excellent comics. Star as a son who grew up too fast and a father who seemingly never grew up at all in Memories of Me. It's like old times. Just you and me talking about our problems. We never talked about anything. Why bring up problems? Memories of Me tackles the age-old story of the father-son relationship that never was one. Memories is more like deja vu. The last time around, it was called Nothing in Common, starring Jackie Gleason and Tom Hanks. But this film is better. Billy Crystal stars as Abby Poland, cardiologist with a broken heart, broken both physically and psychologically. Abby has a mild heart attack while doing surgery and decides to reconcile with the man who caused the psychological heartbreak, his father. Abby's girlfriend is Dr. Lisa McConnell, played winningly by Jo Beth Williams. She never even knew that Abby had a father to visit. Oh, come on, Abby. Every time I'd ask you about him, you'd be... you shrug. I mean, I assume that meant... You take my shrugs too seriously. Oh, come on, really? He's alive? Well, where, where, where is he? Where does he live? He lives in Los Angeles. Well, what does he do? He's a professional embarrassment. Well, how come you never talk about him? There's nothing to say. Oh, well, hello. Welcome home. We said the turtle is back in his shell. Some things are personal. Personal? Personal? Wait a minute. For three years, I assume your father's dead. Now I find out he's alive. That's personal. Abby, this is scaring me. What else have you not told me? I'm a transvestite on the weekends. I knew that. You think Abby's kind of funny? Well, wait till you meet Dad. Abe Poland is the best movie extra in the business. He'll tell you so. Alan King is absolutely endearing as the self-involved juvenile of a father who doesn't know from understanding. You know your so-called mother's crazy. She was always crazy. That's why I divorced her. She said she divorced you. That's how crazy she is. How do I look, Doc? Don't you feel like a putz? A putz? Where else could you lay around all day and get paid? He's got a point. Abe and Abby battle in circles, but finally begin to break through their respective walls with music. The mariachi band thought Abe said, have a tequila, but Abby sets them straight.
rather unorthodox rendition of Ava Nagila. Memories of Me is a romp, but a very uneven one. It's predictable. You know how it's going to end, but so what? Memories of Me may be predictable, maudlin, manipulative, and quite silly. Abe playing a lobster, for instance. But bottom line, I laughed at the lines. It occasionally struck me as a superb stand-up comedy routine for Alan King, trapped in a film. But Williams and Crystal and director Henry Winkler had the good sense to let King's take center screen. Jo Beth Williams does an admirable job of holding her own with two world-class comedians. And Billy Crystal carves out his character quite well. But he seemed to be holding back, maybe wearing multiple hats of co-writer and co-producer made him rein in his acting. Memories of Me may not be memorable filmmaking, but after all the depressing movies I've been seeing lately, I truly enjoyed the laughs. I'm always grateful for laughs, too, but here is an interesting paradox. We just had Punchline, a movie which I felt mixed uh, shtick and emotion in fresh new ways. And now we have this picture in which the, the jokes are funny, but the people aren't really very real. I mean, they've set up basically unhappy, cold, unyielding people. And Maybe that's pretty real, they've though. they beg you to like them. Uh, instead of just showing you naturally. And you know what I really enjoyed was bringing in all these old character actors well, and, and extras, the one yeah. that discovered how to do the murmur in the ho in the courtroom. Murmur, murmur, murmur. Yes. <laughs> that, I like that. I thought that was good. I thought it was but well I worth it for the I do think the movie though. is like two different movies. It becomes gushy, mushy, and sentimental in all the wrong places. There is one great line, if I have time to get it in, though, that I will always remember. The guy says, you want to know my definition of a big agent? The guy who yelled at Frank Sinatra, hey, you want to hold it down? I need it. That's big. <laughs> That's big. I, I don't think I would dare say that, actually. <laughs> Next, Matt Dillon is an ex-con drifter who befriends and involves unsuspecting buddy Andrew McCarthy in a bank robbery in Kansas. Where is it? You got it here? That's where I said it was. You think you're cute, but you're not. You're not even funny. Kansas starts off pretty lame. Andrew McCarthy plays Wade Corey, whose car catches fire on a cross-country trip, burning everything, including traveler's checks and a wedding gift. He's on his way to New York to be his best friend's best man. So rather than getting money wired like a normal person, he hops a freight train and meets Doyle Kennedy, a not-so-ex-con played by Matt Dillon. Well, Doyle talks Wade into forgetting the wedding and coming with him to his hometown in Kansas. Wade is pretty quick to blow off a major obligation. Doyle says his town has a great Fourth of July bash, he just doesn't mention other activities that he has in mind. Are you with me or not? I'm with you. Get the phone. Now you're back. Jesus. Oh, I ain't gonna hurt you. Stay right there, sweetheart. You hear me? I ain't gonna hurt you. Just take it easy. Just take it Wade gets stuck with the money when they get split up, escaping, and hides it. Later, he lies to Doyle about the money's location. I got no sympathy for liars. I didn't really buy these two in their relationship. I certainly didn't buy that music as they pitch headlong into the river. As good as Andrew McCarthy can be, I had trouble accepting him in Wade's skin, especially in the role of drifter romantic. When he and the boss's daughter finally grab each other in the obligatory love relationship consummating clutch, it's for a roll in the hay. Literally, they roll and they roll and they roll in the hay in the barn. It's more silly than sexy. McCarthy is long on puppy appeal, short on smolder. But he is convincing with the side of Wade, who is basically a good guy. He rescues the governor's young daughter from drowning and is named a hero. But he's so adaptable that he tends to go the direction of whoever's closest, be it bank robber or drowning child. Right place, right time, he's a hero. Wrong place, wrong time, he's a thief. A slippery theme, this heartland heroism, and Kansas never really seems to get a grip on it. As for Dylan's Doyle, interesting character, okay job, but Dylan didn't sell as tough enough. Kansas is a good attempt at tackling heroism in an unusual way, but it's sure not worth a trip to the theater. Rent it on a rainy day. I'll bet it'll be out on video real soon.
Boy, are you right. And what I want to know is, what did Kansas ever do to deserve so many bad movies? I mean, didn't, <laughs> Heroes we, in Kansas, didn't no we just less. review this? Two guys on the road in Kansas escaping a farm, and oh, I don't well, know. Kansas just... is a shorter name than Miles from Home. But I tell you, I've said it before, I'll say it again, you cannot make a Matt Dillon movie without subtitles. I couldn't understand more than three <laughs> words that this boy spoke in this picture. And just take the premise for, we're talking dumb now. Here's a nice boy on his way to New York. And he falls, uh, for, he this falls guy? for this guy with a gold tooth, tattoos all over him. Which he displays to everybody so he can be a found. freight train. And why? Because he's lost his credit card? Telephones. They call them telephones that we can American use. American Express has an 800 toll free number. <laughs> all you have to do is call. And I didn't get it why she <laughs> fell in love with him, frankly. Cute, I, but not I thought sexy. it was absurd. When we return, Dixie and I will give you two more at the movie suggestions for your next trip to your video store. Maybe you thought you saw it all in Platoon, but until you see Full Metal Jacket, you haven't seen anything yet. Stanley Kubrick's apocalyptic vision of Vietnam is a rich and terrifying tapestry of war from every angle that explores the madness in us all. Seen through the eyes of Matthew Modine as a bright marine correspondent for Stars and Stripes, it moves from the surrealism of combat duty to the full-scale horrors of the frontline trenches as our own soldiers are reduced to robots and the once dignified Vietnamese people barter everything from their dogs to their daughters to stay alive. It's scalding, it's original, and it's unflinching as both history and art. It's superior to Platoon in every way, in my opinion. And the horror begins right in boot camp, where we watch the humiliation inflicted on a fat, screwed-up mental case by a sadistic drill instructor. And why did you hide a jelly donut in your footlocker private file? Sir, because I was hungry, sir! Because you were hungry. Private Pyle has dishonored himself and dishonored the platoon. I have tried to help him, but I have failed. I have failed because you have not helped me. You people have not given Private Pyle the proper motivation. So, from now on, whenever Private Pyle... I will not punish him. I will punish all of you. And the way I see it, ladies, you owe me for one jelly donut. Now get on your faces. Open your mouth. They're paying for it. You eat it. My video pick is a more intimate war. Prick Up Your Ears is a small film with big impact and difficult subject matter. It's about playwright Joe Orton and the man that he lived with for 16 years, Kenneth Hollowell. Orton's best-known works include What the Butler Saw and Entertaining Mr. Sloan. Orton's success apparently led to the deterioration of his personal relationship, and in 1967, Hollowell hammered Orton to death, then committed suicide. This film is about the rise and the fall of that relationship, and it is riveting. Gary Oldman as Orton and Alfred Molina as Hollowell are exceptional. You feel like you're a voyeur peering through the mail slot into their claustrophobic room and their claustrophobic lives. As Orton grows more popular and acclaimed, Hollowell's excluded. I just want to go to the awards. I could, look, Joe Wharton and guest. I'd behave. I wouldn't say a word, I promise. No. Why? Because it's for me. I wrote it. I gave you the title. Okay, so when they have awards for titles, you can go to that. <laughs> No, this is Mr. Orton's personal assistant. No, he's tied up at the moment. Oh, I see. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Paul McCartney's calling to see you. He's on his way now. 
Not many laughs in either of those movies, but good choices anyway. Let's recap the movies we reviewed on this show. Punchline, starring Tom Hanks and Sally Field. I thought it was a wonderful, bittersweet comedy. I gave it three and a half stars, and Dixie agrees. Three and a half stars from her, too. Memories of Me, I felt was sloppy. Uh, I thought the people were disagreeable and annoying. I only gave it two stars, but Dixie thought the one-liners overshadowed the film. She thinks it's worth seeing for the laughs. Two and a half stars from her. Kansas, well, here's a big waste of time and a film that really should never have been made. I only gave it one star. Dixie thought this Heartland heroism saga never quite rescued itself. One and a half stars from her generous-hearted girl that she is. Oh, I try, I try. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for this week. Next week, James Kahn is a tough Los Angeles cop whose partner has been murdered. And Mandy Patinkin is an alien from another planet who helps him investigate in alien nations. Logical. Hey, makes sense to me. <laughs> and Whoopi Goldberg is going to return to the screen in a serious drama called Clara's Heart. Until then, I'm Rex Reed. And I'm Dixie Watley, and we'll see you at the movies. I went to everybody's head about the bird. The bird, bird, bird. The bird's a winner when the bird, bird, bird. The bird is a winner when the bird. Backed by popular demand, your old-time chewing gums, Beeman's Blackjack and Clove. For a limited time only, Beeman's Blackjack and Clove. Jolly Time Microwave Popcorn. You'll love the great taste and big popping kernels. Available in natural flavor or with the taste of real butter. Get that good, clean effort and feeling when you remove stains and fresh indentures with Effordent every night. Five Bar. The delicious fruit and fiber snack bar, high in fiber, fortified with oat bran. No cholesterol and only 99 calories per bar. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs>